Hello students, welcome to the presentation video tutorial of Paleo Botany. This course is specially designed for the BSc first year students of Botany of Santa Gadage Baba Amravati University. So today we will discuss about the fossil gymnosperms. So before discussing the fossil gymnosperm, we should know about the Paleo Botany. So Paleo Botany means it is the discipline of the science which deals with the study of plant life of geological past. We know that paleontology is the study of the geological past life of both the plant and animal. And fossils are the remains or the traces of the plants and the animals of the past. These remains of the organism from the past geological ages remain preserved in the sedimentary rocks as we discussed earlier in the classes. So in this presentation video, video tutorial we will discuss about the fossil gymnosperms. The first primitive gymnosperms which are evolved during the geological era that is Paleozoic era. So this video tutorial is presented by me, me that is Pranav Gadkar, Assistant Professor at Department of Botany, BNB College, Digress. So, let's get towards the course. So, we will discuss about detail of the fossil gymnosperms here. First of all, the plant fossils from the Paleozoic era in the geological time scale these plant fossils found in the Paleozoic era. The Paleobotanist, Paleobotanist means who study the plant fossils from geological past life. They call them as a progymnosperms. Progymnosperms means these are the primitive gymnosperms. They have the primitive characteristic like a gymnosperms. These are nearer to gymnosperms but not complete gymnosperms means they have the characteristic nearer to gymnosperm but they have not evolved not developed uh, advanced characteristics of gymnosperms so they constitute most of the world dominant vegetation throughout the paleozoic and mesozoic and decline thereafter they are dominant in the paleozoic and mesozoic then due to some reasons due to some extinction they decline thereafter so in this slide we will see the geological history of the gymnosperms. So here we can see in the Devonian period there is a evolution of this primitive gymnosperm. These are classified under Cycadopsida. The first gymnosperms which are evolved are Pteridospermans. Then after that Cycadels are evolved then Venetitis. So in this chapter we will discuss about the Pteridospermans and Cycadels and Benetitis. So, after there is also parallel evolution of the Coniferopsida gymnosperms. These are the advanced form, form of gymnosperms which are evolved during the, they are dominant during the Mesozoic era. These are the Jingoels, Coniferels, So going further, we will discuss about the Pteridospermans, the first fossil gymnosperms. These are known as seed ferns. Why? Because they have the both the characteristic of pteridophytes and gymnosperm. They have the features like pteridophytic reproduction and gymnospermic anatomy. Some paleobotanists consider them as a pro-gymnosperms. These pteridospermans are popularly known as seed ferns because they possess the fern-like pteridosperms. This group is from the Paleozoic era. They show the similarities with the pteridophytes and gymnosperms. The affinities means similarities. They have the slender stem with the large frond like leaves. They are medullate. They have the medullated protostel with the message primary xylem. Means what? The protostel is the anatomy of the stem in which the xylem and phloem are arranged in the 
inner cortex region the message means the xylem is formed first and then all the vascular tissues are formed thereafter then the ovules born on the pinnately compound leaves they have the pinnately compound leaves and the megaspores megasporophylls are not arranged in the strobili like a gymnosperm they have the microsporophylls also they are in the pinnately compound form and not in the strobili then we will study how the pteridospermales are classified first of all arnold in 1948 divided the cycadophilicales into three families that is lysenopteridaceae medulaceae and calamopteridaceae in this lysenopteridaceae there is example lysenopteris and hitrangium medulosae medulosa and calamopteridaceae calamopteris these are the fossil photograph of the pteridospermales plant then after that spawn in 1974 divided pteridospermales into seven families which Lysenopteridaceae, Medulosae, Medulosaceae, Calamopteridaceae, Glossopteridaceae, Peltaspermaceae, Corytospermaceae, and Ketonaceae. We will discuss detail in about Lysenopteridaceae. Lysenopteridaceae, Lysenopteris oldami. This fossil gymnosperms belongs to the family Pteridospermales. it also the reconstructed form of that plant is also called as calamatotheca conin cosa the systematic position we will study it is sub divided into cycadopsida order pteridospermans family is lysenopteridaceae genus lysenopteris and species is oldamia this is the one of the best fossil in the carboniferous period the root stem leaves and the seeds of this plant were independently studied by the paleobotanist but after the detailed study it was finally realized that these were all the parts of single plant then this plant parts are reconstructed and in the one plant that is lysenopteris oldamia we will discussed about the various part in this chapter that is leaves are called as pinopteris honingosae stems are called as lysenopteris oldamia petioles are found and named as brachiopteris aspera roots are called as caniozylon fukeri male reproductive structure that is microsporophylls are named as crossotheca honingosae and seeds that is ovules or the megasporophylls are named as lysenostoma lobaxa the presence of the capitate glands on the cupulate envelope enclosing seeds is the characteristic feature of the lysenopteris the similar type of glands were reported on the stem leaves and also on the rachis which became the basis of the construction of this plant means they have the characteristic feature that is they have the capitate gland over the parts so also on the male reproductive part there is a cube capitate gland then we will study the morphology detail the morphology of lysenopteris these are the climber plant their stems are long aerial and the slender the prop roots are present for the support of the plant the prop roots are the mechanical modification these are the modification of the roots for the mechanical strength to the plant why the mechanical strength is needed because the plant has a slender and tender stem so for the support there is a need of prop roots these prop roots are also present in the angiosperms in the monocot families like maize jaw and the wheat they they are supposed to support the plant leaves may be spirally arranged bipinnate or tripinnate these are they have the spiral arrangement of the leaf 
they are bipinnate or the tripinnate the rachis and the petioles were fixed with the capitate gland we have discussed that the the main featuristic characteristic of this family of this plant is the capitate glands these are also present on the rachis and the petiole then we will discuss the anatomical features of this lysenopteris first of all we will discuss about the anatomy of the stem the stem is found and named as a lysenopteris oldamia the stem were beautifully preserved in the form of petrifaction type of fossils the tears of stem shows the presence of massage siphonous tail with the well developed centrally located teeth the structure was divided into two broad regions that is outer cortical region and inner secondary wood the outer cortex contains radially elongated fibrous strands which form the net like structure this radially elongated fibrous strands these are forming the net like structure while inner cortex contains parenchymatous cells the pericycle is present inner to the cortex consists of many short cells and some sclerotic cells in the primary structure of the stem the pentarch vascular bundles separated by parenchymatous tissues were present these are known as eustelic vascular bundles these are conjoined conjoined collateral and open type of vascular bundles means the conjoined collateral open vascular bundles means the phloem is present outside of the vascular bundle and xylem is present inside and between the phloem and xylem there is a strip of cambium that is secondary meristem lateral meristem it is the xylem is the massage means the first there is a formation of xylem and then there is a formation of other tissues it is also called as monoxylic xylem because the wood form due to the persistent cambium it is have the primary and secondary xylem leaf traces in the anatomy of stem we can see the leaf scars here these are the leaf traces extra stellar region consists of the cortex the outer cortex show the sclerotic nest as we see earlier in the diagram then we will discuss about the root it is named as caliozylon okay the name the in the ts of the cortex of the root is differentiated into outer and inner cortex here the outer cortex is made up of 2 to 3 layers at the thin walled cells while the inner cortex is 4 to 6 layered and contains many cells of the mucilaginous nature as we we see in the diagram there is a 2 to 3 three layers of thin walled cells in the outer cortex and 4 to 6 layered of the this inner cortex cells It, the broad cortex is divisible into outer and inner as we discussed earlier the outer cortex compared with the velamen we know that velamen tissues are present in the orchid plant for example vanda these are the spongy tissues these are also present in the roots of these plants the stems are tetrarch to octarch means 4 to 8 xylem vascular bundles are present in the root the phloem is alternate with the xylem the endodermis and the pericycles are single layer then leaf leaf is named as spinopteris honingosa it is designated as spinopteris honingosa by the paleobotanist it is considered as the leaf of lysenopteris on the basis of cupulate gland the cupulate glands are found on the leaf and hence it is proved that these are the leaves of lysenopteris the leaves are arranged in a 2 by 5 phyllotaxy means the sixth leaf is above the first leaf and subsequently the seventh leaf is above the second leaf and these genetic spirals complete the two cycles then the frond is branch branching is either dicotomous or trichotomous means the dicotomous branching is like 
one rachis gives rise to two fronts it is dichotomous and if one rachis gives rise to two fronts then to the other fronts it's called as trichotomous branch the, on the ultimate branches the pinnules are developed leaf shows the long rachis the long rachis is present in the leaf then we will study the ts of pinna that is <clears throat> it is also called as pinopteris huningosa the epidermis is cutinized on the adaxial surface that is upper surface is the cutinized layer then the stomata are only present on abaxial surface on the lower surface then single vascular bundles are present which comprising of the xylem and the phloem v shaped phloem the leaf traces develop from the rachis enters into the pith then we will discuss the reproductive organs reproductive organs of the plant are heterosporous and it ovules and the seeds were enclosed within the protective cupules the impression of prosthetica was found in the connection with the leaves of the spinopteris honingosa and thus it was concluded as a microsporangium the ovules and the seeds were described because of the presence of this cupulate glands these are thought to be the part of this plant the plant the impression the prosthetica was found in connection with the leaves and concluded as a microsporangium they are described as a lysosome stoma lomaxae then we will discuss about the male reproductive structure that is microsporangium it is named as prosthetica honingosa it consists of uh, flattened distal pinnules these are the flattened distal pinnules present on the microsporophylls these are 6 to 7 bilocular pendant microsporangia this is these are the pendant like microsporangia and the microsporangium was about 3 mm in length and dehiscence was longitudinal the they are dehis in longitudinal manner the microspores present in the cavities of microsporangia here the microsporangia has some cavities in that cavities microspores are developed the microspores had a thick rough exine shed after the maturity the ovules and the seeds it is also called as lysosome stoma lomaxae the seeds are with small and barrel shaped structure they are in the 5 to 6 mm in diameter the seeds are surrounded by cupules these are the capitate glands present in the reproductive structure female reproductive structure of this plant hence it shows that it is the part of the lysosome steris the rachis is covered by the glands and hairs the oil present in that plant is orthotropous type of oil means the micropyle chalaza and the funicle lies in the same line the new nucellus was free at the tip as we can see in the diagram the nucellar colon is free at the tip later stages surrounded by the bell shaped chamber or lagino stem we can see the bell shaped structure in the reproductive organ the ovules are surrounded by outer hard stony layer and inner fleshy layer here the outer hard stony layer is present and inner fleshy layer is present then the capitate glands are present all over the reproductive structure so students in this presentation video tutorial we have discussed about the fossil gymnosperms found in the paleozoic era their evolution then we have studied the various species in the pteridospermates family that is lysosomes the parts of that lysosomes that is leaf stem seeds male reproductive structure we have discussed in detail in this chapter so thank you